Hello everyone. I hope you are fit and fine. Today, in this video, we are going to deal with an important aspect of the poem Critical Appreciation. And of course, in this poem, Rabindranath Tagore describes the innocent wishes of a boy and he stresses the point that without freedom it's not possible to live our life in happy way. So let's see the critical appreciation of the poem Occasion. Here we all know it very well that we need to discuss about five important points title, poet, rhyme scheme, figure of speech and the last point is theme or central idea of the poem. So let's see the first point. We know it very well. The title of the poem. The title of the poem is Occasion which is suggestive of the theme of the poem. And what is the theme of the poem? That is it's a longing for the freedom. Poet. The poem has been written by Nobel laureate Rabindranath Tagore. The third point is very important here that is rhyme scheme. Remember the poem is in pre-verse. Pre-verse means in this poem you will not get any kind of the specific rhyme scheme. There is no any specific rhyme scheme maintained in the poem. So we don't have the rhyme scheme here. So the next point here we are going to discuss that is figure of speech. We are going to discuss only one figure of speech here that is simile. And the example of it is the street lamp stands like a giant with one red eye in its head. Why here we have the simile? Let me tell you. The street lamp is directly compared to a giant using the word like. If you are getting as as or like in the sentence. So that particular sentence is having the figure of speech which is called as simile. This is the direct comparison between the two objects or two persons. We are going to discuss it afterwards. So let's see the last point here that is theme or central idea of the poem. Already we have discussed a lot about it. So let's see. The poem indicates the idea of total freedom. It also describes the longing of a young boy for freedom. So this is all about the critical appreciation. After this we are going towards the next point which is very important that how many poetic devices used by the Rabindranath Tagore. Let's see poetic devices used in the poem. The first figure of speech here we are going to discuss that is alliteration. Alliteration is a term that is related with a series of words begin with the same consonant sound. Already we have discussed about it. We have learned this figure of speech many times. So let's see the example of alliteration in this poem. The example is my mother sends me to bed. So here the sound M that is my mother. Both the words having the sound that is M. And this sound is repeatedly used for poetic effect. And due to that this is alliteration. M sound is a consonant sound. Due to that here we have the figure of speech that is alliteration. The next figure of speech here we are going to discuss that is repetition. So let's see. Repetition is repeating words, phrases or lines or maybe sometimes stanzas. Repetition is used to emphasize a feeling or idea or maybe to create rhythm and to develop a sense of urgency. So here we have the example of the repetition. Bangles, crystal bangles. This particular line is repeated. And why it is repeated? To develop a sense of urgency to create a rhythm right so let's see the word bangles crystal bangles are repeated to create images in our mind of the hawker so this is the intention of the poet and he would like to create 
the picture or the image of a hawker in our mind with the help of this repetition. The third figure of speech here we are going to discuss that is onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia is a very important figure of speech when a word is formed from a sound associated with it. It is called as an onomatopoeic word. The figure of speech is called onomatopoeia. It means whenever any one of the word indicates the sound or maybe it is associated with that particular sound. So it is called as onomatopoeia. For example, in the poem, the first line of the poem, when gong sounds 10 in the morning. So gong is an onomatopoeic word which formed from the sound associated with it. So gong is the sound or maybe siren or this is a long sound. Okay, so here we have the gong which created the sound. So due to that here we have the onomatopoeia. The next thing is very important. I would like to tell you that in this poem, the poet has used onomatopoeic word. As so many words are there in English which are onomatopoeic. For example, bang is there, tap is there, tinkle is there, crash is there, whistle is there. So, so many words are there which are associated with the sound. So this is all about the poetic devices used in the poem. I hope your concept of critical appreciation is now totally clear. So if you have any kind of the doubt, you can comment in the comment box. Thank you everyone. Stay home. Stay safe.